Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Help me celebrate them. Everybody, clap for them. Can we sit here? Can we sit here? Sit here. Sit here. Sit here. Everybody sit here. I want to talk to all of you. Sit here. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't tell you before. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are in church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the, the ministration of the music ministry this morning is very powerful and it is actually to the glory of God in line with what I want to share. And I didn't tell them what I was going to share. So I want to appreciate God in their life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As I look into many things, number one, I look into the fact that we have just finished the first half of the year. To the glory of God. If you are grateful to God, we just say thank you, Jesus. How many of us know that it's not everybody who started January with us that finished, that came into July with us? Not everybody. But you and I, we are here, you know, because God has a purpose for you. And he has a purpose for me. And this thing I know without a shadow of doubt, I will be alive and well by this time next year. I will not be in the hospital. And I will not be in the mortuary. And I will not be below six feet down. I will be alive and well. Would you declare that over your life? That should not be too difficult for you to say, by this time next year, in the name of Jesus, I, someone who I will be alive and well, declaring the counsel of the Lord in the land of the living, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. See, there is power in what you say. Especially when you are declaring the word of God. I know without a doubt that there are people that death came visiting. And when death got there, he said, this guy, we can't take him now. Death can't take him. He said, why? He said, did you not hear what the guy is declaring all the time? He said, I shall not die. He said, so what are you going to do now? He said, well, there are other people saying what will be, will be. <laughs> Don't ever say what we do with you. I plead with you. Eh? I say, well, if we die now, we're all going to heaven. No, I'm not dying. Yeah. You know, I was entering, Father Lord, I was entering a place of prayer one day recently. I mean, actually, it was at the convention last month or so. I was entering the place, and I'm meeting this. I'm meeting this guy, and the first thing he said, "You see, anybody can die at any time." Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh God! If you are ready to die, you can go now. This man is not dying now. He said, "You know, you have to understand what I'm saying. I don't understand what you are saying. I will live long." Why is it that it's a matter of death? I'm opening the door. And the first thing you are saying is anybody can die at any time. If you are ready to go, oh, no. yeah, it's highway 49. <laughs> I am not ready to go at all. My life is just beginning. Amen. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, as I look around and I see that we just finished this for six months, and I look to the next six months of the year, we're not here in church. Last week, Sunday, you guys were having fun at the park. How many of you enjoyed that? Mm, mama, <laughs> Papa, you enjoyed it. Woo, awesome, awesome. We're going to have it again. Are you happy with that? We're going to have it again. But you see, uh, I looked at that, and I also look at the, so, so the first six months and the next six months, I'm like, Lord, what should we really be doing? What should we be doing? And then I look at the challenges going on around the world. Every day, I mean, it's tiring. I don't know about you. It's just tiring. Yesterday morning, we were praying some pastors. I pray with some pastors, you are aware, in the morning and uh, every Saturday. And they said, I, didn't, uh, I don't know who the pastor is yet. They said, there is the pastor preaching that there is no rapture. Ah. He said the guy is a big guy. I don't know who the guy is yet, but I'm going to say for instance, he's teaching that there is no rapture. Okay? 
In the night we were praying with another group of pastors and another person mentioned that there is a guy teaching that there's no rapture. I mean, isn't that tiring? Like somebody will really just rise up and say there is not going to be rapture? Brethren, there will be rapture. Huh? Why? Because the Bible says say so. That's all. That's all. You look around and you see all the challenges going on every day. And so, in the process of being humanly tired, I was speaking to the Lord like, Lord, what exactly is going on? And you know, what came to my mind is what I want to share with you this morning, and it's really simple. I believe the Holy Spirit is not my spirit to say, embrace the power of prayer. So when things are good, you pray. So when things are not good, you pray to turn it around. Are we together? When life is good, you pray so that it remains good. When life is challenging, you pray. And while you are praying, don't get discouraged because you may pray today and your answer may come in two years. I'm not going to do theology this morning. I know a little bit in the school of ministry, but that's not, I'm not going to teach on, you know, theology of prayer. I'm hoping that I can show you how prayer has been a very consistent factor in almost every testimony. Are we together? Hello, church. Wherever you have seen a situation that is not good, and it turned around, you will almost certainly see prayer. Are we together? You will see somebody, you will see an individual, whether it's the person who is in the matter, or somebody who is so touched with the matter, and they started praying about it. But one thing you will see is that there is always prayer in the mix. There is always prayer in the mix. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So every time, as I look at the challenges, I believe the Holy Spirit say, Pastor, just pray. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Even when I get discouraged, keep praying. Don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. It's not a day you pray that you get the result, but keep praying. So like I said, Everywhere you see a turnaround situation, prayer is consistent. Prayer is a constant factor. You never hear a true testimony of turnaround without the testifier talking about prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, hallelujah. Amen. I'll give you an example as we start this morning. In James chapter 4, 5, verse 14, in James chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible says, Is any sick among you? It says, Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray. What should they do now? Let them pray over him.
tribulation. You would think that that is a good thing, right? But they were put in prison. Well, what happened was in the night, you know, they started praying, praising the Lord. And then there was a divine intervention. What, do we, what, are we, what can we learn from that? No matter what we go through, let's find strength or courage to pray. Find courage to pray. I have told people time and time again, if you are so strong, if you don't have the physical strength to stand like this to pray, lay on your bed, just don't sleep and pray there. Go on your knee, place your head somewhere and pray there. And there will be divine intervention. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Brethren, no matter what you are going, going through, your struggles in life, that Jesus knows everything about, if you truly desire a change, I want you to embrace prayer better than the way you have embraced it in the past. If you truly desire a turnaround, if you truly desire a miracle, please embrace prayer the more. You say, Pastor, I'm already praying one hour, two hours a day. Then pray three. Then pray four. The story was told to us of a man, an extremely busy man. Extremely busy. He had time for nothing. Then, one day, they discovered the pattern of his life. That any day, that he always come late to office on, on particular days. And so they discovered that those days that he comes late to the office were days that his files were many, so many. And they were, the days that the files are not so many, he comes quickly. So they ask him, sir, the day you are supposed to come to the office quicker or earlier so that you can take care of all these files on time is the day you come two hours late. So said, what's going on? He said, because I know the burden that are ahead of me, so I pray two hours more before I come to the work, to the office. Brethren, if you want to turn around, you must embrace prayer. You must embrace prayer. Amen. You must embrace prayer. For the benefit of everybody, what is prayer? What is prayer? Prayer is where we speak to God about our needs. Prayer is a platform, it's a channel of communication between you and God. All of my very, very young children, that is very simple for you to understand. If you want to talk to God, you can talk to God. Are we together? Yes. All you have to do is pray. When you pray, God hears. And he hears and he responds to you. Are we together? Yes. And there is no situation that is too big that you, shouldn't, that you cannot pray about. Neither are there any situations that are too small that you cannot or should not pray about. Prayer is a channel, is a method, a spiritual principle, a spiritual channel created by God himself through which we can talk to him and he can talk to us. Are we together? Prayer is a way where we should be make known our request unto God. Prayer is a channel, is a process where we make our heart you know, there are things in your heart that you cannot talk to somebody about. You can open them up to God in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. What is prayer? Prayer is a major channel to make your request known unto the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Bible says, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, everybody see everything. Some people are looking at their food. Say everything. everything. Bible says don't be anxious. Don't be worried. Don't be worried. 
Listen, we have situations that can make us worry, that should make us worry, but we choose not to worry. Worry is a choice. Are we together? I choose not to worry. I choose to pray. Amen? Amen. Choose to pray rather than choose to worry. Bible says, don't be anxious. Just pray about everything. By prayer and supplication, we tell you, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7. Verse 7, please. And the peace of God. I've enjoyed this. I believe that many people here this morning or those hearing me online that has also enjoyed this. When you pray over a matter, you enjoy the peace of God over the matter. Is there somebody who has enjoyed that? Yes. When I pray about a matter, I have peace. Why? Because through prayer, listen, everybody, through prayer what we do is we turn our battles over to God. And as I look into my life, I saw that I am very, very helpless with myself. Like, wow, so I thought I had power. We don't have power. We don't. Over many matters. The only power you have is the power of prayer. You pray over a matter, you turn it over to the Lord. Are we together? Yes, Do you understand this? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, and we see, you know, in Luke chapter 18, we see a story of a woman from verse 3 to 8. Luke chapter 18, from verse 3 to 8. The Bible tells us the story of a man, of a woman, whose name we don't know, but whose title we know. The Bible called her a widow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There are a lot of people in the Bible that we know them by their affliction. May you never be low with your affliction. I'm telling you. You can be the richest man on earth, but if you have ailment, what you be know with is, oh, the man that, may that not be your question. The Bible said this woman was a widow in the city and she came to him saying, get justice for me for my adversaries. Get justice for me for my adversaries. And as she began to come to that judge every day, every night, every day, every night, the judge who says he neither fear God, not man, or fear God, came to a point to say, this lady is going to wear me out. Are you tired in the place of prayer already? You say, but pastor, I've been praying over this matter for one year. Have you seen the result? The answer is no. Then keep praying. You are still alive. The time you stop praying is when you are dead. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. And none of you will die early. Yes. There will be no untimely death in our midst. Yes. So don't give up. I know it's challenging. Even God knows that what you are going through is challenging. Are we together? But talk to him about it. Pray about the situation. Any believer who don't pray has chosen to live a life of defeat. What did I say? Any believer who chooses not to pray has chosen to live a life of defeat. The ones who are praying are seeing challenges. Now you that you are not praying, you know, we, you know the life you are going to live. You know. You know. Well, how can we engage the power of prayer? Number one, we must acknowledge that there is power in prayer. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, a righteous man, the Bible says, avail it much. Brings enormous power. The effective prayer, effective, powerful prayer of a righteous man. So, we must understand that there is power in prayer. 
I don't want any one of us to get to a point where we begin to question the power that is in prayer. Maybe we got to we, we, we see situations. You pray for somebody, and and, and you know, you are not seeing result. Don't question the power of prayer or the power in prayer. It's not impossible that people hearing me this morning, online and on ground, will just have a reason to say, to ask questions, does God truly answer prayer? It's possible that somebody hearing me, or that somebody hearing me that is questioning, that does have that question legitimately on their mind. But I'm here to tell you that God answers prayers. You know that God answers prayers. I know that God answers prayers. And I will show you very soon. Then, I mean, without a pastor standing to teach you on this subject, my dear brother and sister, you know that God answers prayers. I can bring one, two, three, bring a couple of you here to say, tell me, give me a testimony about how God has answered your prayer. It will blow your mind what people will say. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's take our first case study this morning in the book of Acts of Apostles. Acts of Apostles chapter 12. A classic case study in the school of prayer. Acts of Apostles chapter 12, I'm going to read, or we are going to read from verse 1 to 11. I read the New King James. Thank you, son. Here the Bible says, Now, about the time Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Please, as we read God's word, follow through. Don't just scan. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to make this word to you. We started by saying Herod the king stretched his hand to harass the church. Today, today, the church of Jesus is being harassed on earth. Maybe you don't know that there are people being put in jail because they are believers. They are Christian believers around the world today. The Bible says, Then this Herod killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that he pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to see spirit also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. You see, this is why we must not tolerate any evil. If you tolerate any evil, if you give the devil a foothold, he will go a mile. Every time you observe any trace of evil in your life, fight it in the place of prayer and with prayer. Fight it. Fight it. A man of God said something to us. He was, they were married, he was married with his wife, and they had no children for about 10 years. Every year. And they did all the uh, tests, the lab work, yet, and every try, everything they were doing, there was no child, there were no children. And they will minister to people in the church. And the people will conceive. And they will give birth to children. And these pastors will go dedicate the children. But they themselves, they didn't have children. At the 10th year anniversary, they went to their pastor, to the overall general overseer, the leader of their ministry. And when they got to him, they said, Sir, we are praying for people. They are getting pregnant. They are having children. We are dedicating countless children, but we don't have children. The man of God said to them, he said, you have allowed the devil on this matter. As they were talking, the Lord spoke through their leader to them. He said, you gave the devil a foothold on this matter. He said, how, sir? He said, because you have been too patient on this matter. 
Say now, go and fight the devil of badness in your life. Say everything you are, go and use it to fight in the place of prayer, the devil of badness. By the grace of God, one year later they were carrying to it. By the grace of God, as they embrace the power of prayer, as they embrace and fought the devil, brethren, please let us stop giving the devil, you know, a foothold in our lives. Because he will try to take him out. And if there's anybody here who has given a foothold, who the devil is operating in their affair, today in the name that is above every other name, we stop the activities of the enemy. Amen. So the Bible says, you know, it was about the day of the unleavened bread. So when he had arrested Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after the Passover. Now, verse 5, Peter was kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Everybody say by the church. Constant prayer. Constant prayer. And when Herod was about to bring him out, <laughs> that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the girls before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on this side, and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Guard yourself and tie your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him. And did not know what was done by the angels was real. But thought he was having a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city which opened to them of its own accord. Pay attention to this scripture. And they went out, and they went down the street, and immediately the angel departed. How did this happen? The Bible says the church made constant prayer for Peter. Constant prayer. There is power in prayer, children of God. As I read this scripture, I came to, I think, verse 5, and I'm asking myself, a question. Maybe it will bless you. Let me share with you. Maybe it will bless you. Do you know that as the church were praying, I don't know how many days, I've not researched that. I will research, look into that. How many days, how many weeks, how many times uh, it was there in the prison. But the church kept praying. They did not give up on him. And as they kept praying, you will wonder that he might, go, he might have gotten to some point that the church members will say, God, when are you going to release this guy? After all, he's your minister. God, would you do something? But God was waiting. At the right time, the God of heaven who make all things beautiful in his time, on the day that a wicked herald wanted to bring him out, the Lord arose. The Lord arose. The condition in your body. God is arising for you today. Amen. The matter concerning your career. God is arising for you today. Amen. You may think God is delayed. He's not delayed. Your time is now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say your time is now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so he was in prison. He was challenged. And his imprisonment can be likened to physical or spiritual imprisonment that people go through today. The physical one, now there's no type of imprisonment that is good, but spiritual imprisonment is worse. Yeah. Emotional imprisonment is worse than physical imprisonment. Are we together? Yes. Paul the Apostle wrote many of his books from prison, from jail. If you read his books very well, you will understand that some of the descriptions he used were because of what he was seeing when he was in prison. But if somebody is an emotional prisoner, a spiritual prisoner, their mind will not be able to write anything. Hello? Hello, George? Yes, so please, engage the power of prayer just as the other apostles did. Maybe you are the apostle for your family. Maybe you are the apostle for this church. 
Maybe you are the apostle for this community. There is too much sin going on around the world in the United States of America. There is too much embracing evil in the land. We must arise and our prayers must bring a change. Our prayers must bring a change. Was it Daniel? They took it, they made a decision, and they said, In this land, you can't pray anymore. You can only pray in the name of the king. You can only pray. Maybe one day Biden will rise up and say, You can only pray in the name of Biden. You say, Ah, oh, it's not possible. Huh? Hello? Many a day we rise when the president will say, only in our name you pray. And somebody will say, well, after all, we can say that in the open. We go to the closet and pray in the name of Jesus. That's not acceptable. The Bible says when they made that decision, what did Daniel do? The Bible says he opened his window as he, went, as he does. His, that was his practice. He didn't shut the window. The Bible says the only way where they could have gotten hold of Daniel was by the reason of his faith. And then when they made that decision, what did he do? When they made the law, he opened the window and he began to pray. And they said, uh -uh. did you not hear what, we said, what was told us? He said, you can't pray to any God except the God of the king. <laughs> They put him in prison in uh, huh? Lion's Den. Thank you. And some of our fathers in faith have told us that those lions became his pillows. That when, as soon as he got there, he needed to rest to sleep. And the lions, like they just laid down, and then they put his head on the lions. Every lion harassing your life. The almighty God of heaven will give you victory over them all. Amen. So what happened? Peter was in that prison and the Lord sent his angels. Today I pray that the almighty God will send his angels. Amen. Will send his angels. Amen. Every spiritual gauge of prison holding your destiny and my destiny the angels will fling them open this morning. There are things people go through and they don't even know they are going through it. I pray for you today, if there's anyone in our ministry who's going through something and they are not aware, or even you are aware, that God will send help to you. Amen. He will send help to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, there are people in our household, like we see in the case of Peter here, you know, he was not even the one praying. This is why you need godly people around you, godly influences and influencers. My dear children, the younger ones, hear me. Hear me. Especially those of you in college, and those of you going to college, hear me clearly. One of the best decisions you will ever make in life is to surround yourself with righteous influences and influencers. My son, if the sinner entice you, don't consent. Are we together? Say no. If you don't have a friend who can stand for you in the place of prayer, you are in trouble. Hmm? You don't have a friend that when you are in need of prayer, the person can rise up and say, she's my friend. I'm standing in the place of prayer for him. Are we together? You don't have a friend who can clear their desk and say, my friend is in danger and I'm, I'm not going to walk today. I'm not going to walk. My walk today is my prayer for him. I want you to deliberately surround yourself with people who can pray for you, with you. People who can surround your life with prayer. Who can challenge you and say, let's pray together. Not just the friends who we have to, let's go to party. Let's go to club. There is no, no friends who will tell you that there is no scripture in the Bible that says people who drink beer will go to hell. If you have friends like that in your life, they will ruin your life. God forbid. Hmm? One bottle today, another one tomorrow. 
Before you know it, you are going gradually. Gradually. Hmm? The God is a God of mercy. We know. But it's the same God who judges iniquity, even in Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Are we together? Surround yourself with people who will nudge your spirit, man. Who will nudge you in the way of righteousness. That when you bring up a matter and they say, oh, you are discussing the matter. They were, oh God, this one, don't do it, though. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Don't do it. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's the, one of the best things you will do for yourself is to have godly influences around your life. Godly influences. It may hurt because they're going to tell you the truth. And you may lose out in some things, but on the long run or in the long run, you are going to see that. Ah! Thank God for that, my brother's advice. Are we together? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, see, I want you to embrace prayer better than the way you have embraced it in the past. I want you to embrace prayer. I want you to pray very well every day. I, I wonder what would have happened to somebody like me if I didn't know how to, I don't know how to pray. In life. Ah, my eyes are still challenges. Hmm? Like the prayer we prayed this morning. After the choir administration, I remember the day I prayed that kind of prayer. And I remember how God changed my story. Hmm? And I remember and I know that there are people, sadly, sadly, who we were together on that day. Are we together? About 35 years ago, who are still at the same spot where they were, the day I cried to God in that church. The day I said, God, my struggle, would you change like Jabez of old? Like how many of you know that Jabez would have died in sorrow? This is why you should not give sorrow. Don't, don't allow it. Cry to God. Jabez would have died in sorrow. He would have died in pain. And would have been a very evil statistic. But now it's a good statistic for us. It's a good example for us. If you will cry to God, if you will embrace prayer, you know, your life is going to change. Amen. Your life will change. How many of you know that prayer changes things? It does. It does. It does. Brothers, sisters, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. If you take a failure, somebody who is failing an exam, if you take them and you start praying for them consistently, consistently, very soon you will see divine intervention in their lives. If you take a marriage that is dead and you start praying, you start praying, you start praying, you start praying over that marriage, very soon God will intervene. God will intervene. I told somebody you were having a challenge many years ago. I told somebody, I said, my dear sister, pray, pray about this marriage. You say, Pastor, is he everything we pray about? Then we pray to get husband. We pray to get wife. We are still going to pray to maintain the husband and the wife. And there are people that you know. What is wrong with a woman, a married woman, taking five minutes a day to pray about her marriage? About her children? About her husband? Hello? You spend more than five minutes on the phone talking to your friends. Why would you spend that five minutes talking to God? About your family. Lord, I wake up today. Uphold this wedding. Uphold this marriage. Give us godly children. Help us to raise godly children. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Father, don't let my children go astray. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who has gone astray, Father, buy them back. In the name of Jesus. Bring them back. And you began to pray. And you are praying. And by the grace of God, God will preserve your house. Brethren, I will continue. Uh, you know, I'll continue this because of time. I don't want to take you beyond uh, 11 a.m. in the church. But I want you to embrace prayer. 
I want you not just congregational prayer. There is power in congregational prayer. Power, 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 power in congregational prayer. But it is high time you had your own personal time of prayer with God. Hello, church. Your own, your own, your own time with God. Where you pray to Him, where you speak to Him. And the Bible says, God said, I am the God who hear and answer prayer. If you are not speaking this, you can't hear anything. Let me say this to you before I close. This was what John Wesley said. John Wesley. He says, It seems that God is limited by our prayer lives. <laughs> John Wesley. He says, It looks like God is limited by our prayer lives. That he cannot do anything for humanity unless somebody asks him. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask. And you will do what? Huh? Hello? He says it looks like God is limited by our prayer lives. And he cannot do anything for humanity unless somebody asks him. Hmm. Hmm. It is well with you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to pray for grace for us to pray. Now, how do you learn how to pray? By praying. Huh? By praying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do you learn how to pray? By praying. That's all. That's how to learn how to pray. How do you learn how to pray? By praying. By praying. By praying. You say, Pastor, I don't even know how to start. Like me too, I don't know how to start. I just start. I just start. Sometimes when I want to pray, I just turn for a worship song on my YouTube and he's ministering like Nathaniel Bass. He's ministering, he's ministering um, like this like you know somebody don't mind, old school ones. I love, I love them. Ron Kennelly, I love them all. As they are ministering, my spirit is roaring. My spirit is roaring and I began to pray. Recostota, la brade de leche, de rocha, de brocoto, de sucatayaraya, rapracatala legedesh. I just begin to pray. How do you learn how to pray? By praying. Please practice it. Start praying today. Don't wait till tomorrow. And the mercy of God will prevail for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need revival in our homes. We need the fire of God. We need the move of God. We will not experience the move of God if we don't pray. There is no move. Every move of God is traceable to somebody praying. Or some people pray. Not some people talking. Hmm? It is well with you. Rise on your feet this morning. Father, we want to give you glory, praise, and honor. Let the grace to pray come upon your church this morning. Lift up your two hands to heaven, everybody. Your two hands to heaven. Pray to the Lord. Say, Father, Father I receive the grace to pray, to pray. in season, out of season, at all times. I receive the grace in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace. 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 I receive the grace in the name of Jesus. Strengthen me physically, spiritually, in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to pray in the name of Jesus. I will not be tired. I will not be weary. I will not be tired. I will not be weary. I receive the grace physically, spiritually, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me in the name of Jesus. Let your fire come into my bones in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to pray now. And forever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you.